All right, we are here at my tiny indoor worm bin. And the last time we were in here, we talked about how much food a new worm bin with about 500 worms eats. And we talked about how you really don't have to worry about the worms starving. And that's because they have all of this great bedding right here. Now, we are gonna feed them a little bit of a different feeding. We usually put it right down the middle right here. What we're gonna do is we are gonna spread it out and I'm gonna try and cover it with a lot of wet bedding. And look at that, we got a nice worm right there. We're gonna go ahead and dig down in here because last time we gave them a little bit of a bigger feeding and it consisted of apple cores, sprouts, some celery, strawberry tops, blueberries, mushrooms, and a couple pieces of lettuce. And check it out, right there, that's where they are, right in that feeding zone right there. So we started with 500 worms and they have already started to make some great castings. And this bin is about 35 days old so far. And it is really working really well. And you can also see a little bit of the coffee beans, that kind of thing. Let's keep digging around and seeing if there's any more right down there in that zone. And yep, they seem to be concentrated right there, which is great. We go to this corner here and see if there's any there. And it is drier. That is for sure. Now, I took 14 days off in this bin since the last feeding. Just kind of got busy, so the bin dried out just a little bit. This bin is kind of similar to one that someone that's just getting into worm farming might have. It doesn't drain. It's just a Rubbermaid tote, so it runs a little bit different than my bigger bins that have like four or 5,000 worms in it. And one of the things that I found is that it's hard to keep the moisture level higher at the beginning. And real quick, let's look at that. Look at those worms, I love it. And it's a little bit harder to keep it drier at the end. So what I'm trying to do is just keep it a little bit drier towards the beginning, and hopefully I won't get sopping wet castings towards the end. So let me just finish aerating this out and getting some of the dry mixed in with the wet. So one of the things I've noticed is that they completely devoured the sprouts and I had never put sprouts in here before. Now I know that is a, f a food that is probably closer to being a fast food, almost like lettuce for them. All right, so right now is when I kind of dig a trench and then put some bedding in and lay down the food. But what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna have it flat and I'm gonna put the food right on top. So here's what we had in mind to feed. Now this right here is part of a loofah sponge. We've used it for about a year and I rinsed it really good. It was in our kitchen, you know, cleaning our plates and dishes, that kind of thing. So it has outlived its usefulness and it is gonna go into the worm bin. I've put these in before and the worms absolutely love climbing in and out of them. I don't know if that's to kind of rub off their cocoons or are they just like going into things like that? But in this feeding here, we've got a lot of strawberries, we've got some carrots, we've got an apple core, we've got some potato peels right here. And let me go ahead and kind of spread it out because what I'm gonna try and do here is kind of get some moisture out to the edges and you're gonna bury it so it's not gonna be sticking out. When you have a worm bin, you really don't wanna have your food kind of sitting out on top unless you have a lid that is not gonna allow any kind of critters inside. And you also can't let light inside it either because if the food's on top and it's, there's light on it, the worms aren't gonna come up either. So I think that's pretty uniform feeding right there. And then we're also gonna go in with our amendments, which in this case is just some worm chow and it's expired oats for my pantry. And I just like to spread it lightly on the surface for them right there, although this is going to get buried. And then we'll go in with some coffee grounds, another food source for them and a good way to get rid of your coffee grounds and get them into the garden after they've been digested by the worms. And then finally, we'll go in with some crushed eggshell, and this is grit for the worms. They have a gizzard, and also another way for me to put some of the nutrients back into the garden instead of into my garbage can. So in this bucket, I've put in some shredded cardboard and I've wet it down. So this is what I'm gonna put on top for them. I'll try and put it uniformly on there. And this is a little bit wetter than I typically would put in a worm bin. Usually if you squeeze, there should only be a few drops, but this definitely has more drops. And that's just because the bin is a little bit drier. So we're just gonna add some dampness through both the food and this damp cardboard here. So if I end up keeping to the intervals of 14 days, which I'm not trying to, I'm trying to go about every week, this amount of wet cardboard will dry out. So I'm not adding too much moisture overall because a bin, like I said, like this, tends to get a little bit dry because worm castings are like super moisture gatherers and holders. So when it doesn't have very many castings, it just doesn't stay that wet. So next 
we'll just put our newspaper over the top. And again, this is just more bedding for them, but it also helps to act as a light barrier. And then we'll put our piece of plastic here. And this is kind of a moisture barrier. Any kind of moisture that evaporates and hits the top here will just sink back down into the bin. So I think that will about do it. I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing great. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.